I mean, on a positive note, I mean, the first thing I would think is why don't you get into it in the first place? I got into it because of friendship uh, with, with my friend Rick. Uh, I'm more into it with uh, honey with my daughter. Uh, my grandson, I just bought him a bow and he just absolutely loves it. Just the family aspect of the sport, you know, as well as, you know, enjoyment of the venison is, is what I'm, you know, encouraged to keep hunting for. This is our hunting family, every one of them. We love them dearly. Our daughter, she used to get jealous because we'd talk about this family up here. So she was up here one day and she's seen us and seen how we was doing everything. She said, Mama, I know what you're talking about now. I said, that's right. This. You're my family, but these are my family too, and we love them dearly. My dad has learned some special recipes for cooking deer, and uh, we always save our best cuts for family uh, get-togethers, family reunions, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and we always cook up a whole lot of deer for the whole family. You know, hunting is maybe the only sport where grandpa and dad and uh, the child can all be on the field at the same time. The deer, are just part of that, that resource, uh, that history, that legacy. I don't want that to go away. When Mississippi discovered its first positive case of CWD, we still thought, well, that's way down in the Delta. We don't have to worry about that. Lo and behold, less than a year later, my best friend calls me up and says, Rick, I got a deer tested and it was positive. It completely blew me away. I mean, words can't describe what I felt. Uh, it's just like you let all of the air out of my balloon. I mean, I just, I was devastated. You kill deer mostly to get the meat out of it. It's for joy and fun, but the overall goal is to get something to eat out of it. But when you have to throw it away, it just sinks your hopes a little bit. None of the deer that I've harvested that tested positive look sick. The, the deer that my daughter killed look perfectly healthy. Um, the deer, the two that I killed, look perfectly healthy. Um, the deer that Rick's son killed look perfectly healthy. So there was no indication that the deer were sick at all. We just thought it was a regular deer because it looked as healthy as it could be. We heard something about CWD, so we sent it in for testing just to be sure. But we had ate probably half that deer by then and we figured out how to had CWD, so. He actually killed three eight points out of that same stand. Two of them had CWD. The two healthiest looking ones had CWD, the poorest. We just knew he would test positive and he was clear. You know, I always had a saying, you know, the work starts when you pull the trigger, but it, it, it continues now when you're processing and, you know, trying to make sure it's good and meat. It's a real mental game too. I'm like that in the deer stands, like you see the deer coming, is it infected? You know, should I take this shot? Like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a mental gymnastics, as I say, it works sometimes, so. In the last four or five years, our deer sightings have significantly decreased. Is it CWD? It could be, maybe not, I don't know. But I know CWD is in the area, but I know that we're not seeing the number of deer that we used to see. We immediately decided that QDM was no longer going to work because we couldn't protect that older age class of bucks since they're so susceptible and apt to be uh, carrying the prion. So we moved away from that more to free choice and with some regulation that they had to kill a doe before they could kill a buck. So we tried to uh, uh, maintain or even increase the uh, harvest just a little bit and also to release uh, that buck component so we were taking more of those. You've had a lot of people interested in learning more about it. I try to refer them to the Louisiana Department of Wildlife Fisheries website because I'm sure no expert and I don't want to give them wrong, bad information. I've cut out all mineral sites. Some of them I've backfilled with dirt and then we've cut out all supplemental feed. All, there's no feeders where the broadcaster or uh, gravity fed, everything's off the property. As an outdoorsman, a landowner, a hunter, I would cooperate with state officials as best you can. Some people don't share the same beliefs, but I think we do have the same um, goal in preserving our deer population and our outdoors. As far as CWD, I hate that it actually got here. The deer I see per year has actually been falling every year. And then, then we found that CWD was here. TWRA moved in and did a really good job, I think, informing us of how CWD would affect things and what we need to do to kind of 
keep killing more deer. The biologist that uh, we talked to, he was very helpful. He explained the situation, how it's transmitted, and how to dispose of stuff and, and things of that nature. And uh, he was very helpful. Eliminate a lot of the deer, spread them out in their food plot. Instead of making a little tiny food plot, make it a lot bigger food plot and stop all the feeding and mineral blocks. No, wouldn't want to feed anybody uh, infected deer meat, infected venison. Uh, so not only my grandkids, but my sisters and brothers that we share with, uh, neighbors. He killed the deer and I asked my dad, I said, we were looking at it, figuring skin it, and he said, I said, you think we need to get it tested? And he said, Man, that deer's healthy as a horse. He was fat, there's no reason to, but two weeks into taxidermist freezer, he asked, we want to get it tested, see that deer? I said, sure. I said, Man, that deer's fine though. It was almost two months later, we get a call and said, hey, uh, Tripp's deer tested positive for CWD. And Even if CWD is not anywhere near where you are, you should still get your deer tested. Everyone should get their deer tested. And I always assure my family that I have tested my deer to make sure that uh, they did not test positive. It gives me a peace of mind. Hopefully it gives my family a peace of mind that it's okay for them to eat that venison. We enjoy eating venison, but uh, I'm not gonna, certainly not gonna um, put one in the freezer until I, well, until I know it's a, a negative test. Oh yes, I feel very safe has been tested. As me and my brother discussed the other day, when we got the first one tested, it probably wasn't the first one that we had harvested that may have been infected with the disease. Just for a clear mind, <laughs> we're gonna get them tested just to be sure. And throwing some away is almost like having a garden. You can't eat everything that you get out of your garden. Some of it is gonna be good, some of it's gonna be bad, but you still go through the effort of putting it out there nurturing it, taking care of it, you know, fertilizing, doing all the things you need to do. You know, even with the knowledge that you're not gonna be able to harvest it all. Some of it's gonna be good, some of it's gonna be bad, but you still do it for the love of what you're doing it for. The one thing that I wanna encourage everyone to do, uh, all hunters out there, families, deer clubs, everybody to work hard, to work together, to do what we can to slow and stop the spread of this disease. I encourage everyone to work with your state agency and do whatever you can to slow and stop the spread of this disease. Landowners and hunting clubs and all that need to do whatever they can to prepare for it and do whatever they can to prevent it, if it's even possible. And unfortunately, my property last year, I, I, I checked in three deer, a four and a half year old buck, um, a three-year-old doe and a year-and-a-half-old doe, and all three were positive. It's a waste of the resource. We don't, I don't like to see anything just waste away like that. Of course, there's a lot of deer out there that do not have the disease. So why would you sit there and, and not have fun or not watch someone else have fun? Just say they're going to die anyway. Hey, that's, that's just a waste to me. It's just a waste. As a land owner, as an outdoorsman, as a hunter, you should have an open mind and listen to advice, be open to education, um, be open to fact-finding um, missions. And I think we just have to all learn as we go with this process, because again, I, I have not met anyone yet that has told me, hey, I have all the answers. Deer hunting for me and my family is not just about killing deer, it's about fellowshipping, getting out there, having a good time with my dad, my brothers, my best friend Kervin, my sons, and uh, we've had a lot of fun deer hunting over the years. If you love to hunt, you love deer, you need to continue hunting. That's all it is, that you need to continue hunting, and that will help the herd. As long as you're helping the herd, you're helping what you enjoy. The sport itself is, is the biggest encouragement even though I, I love the venison, but it's just the family aspect of the sport, you know, as well as, you know, enjoyment of the venison is, is what I'm, you know, encouraged to keep hunting for. I believe we'll have a, uh, we'll continue to have a good life of hunting in a, ahead of us. <laughs>